Uh, new trailer for the upcoming mobile game Ever Crisis. We saw that in the uh, the full the full presentation. Uh, we'll cover key elements of the Final Fantasy VII timeline, including events of the original game, plus new story elements uh, penned by uh, Nojima about the young hero Sephiroth. New trailer. Kidasi, the producer, said, We're honored to bring Final Fantasy VII Rebirth to players around the world next year. And this installment of the thrilling tale, Cloud and his friends both and new returning will embark on an adventure so all players can enjoy this story, even with those uh, without any familiarity to previous titles or original Final Fantasy VII. The entire team has worked fervently, fervently, uh, with love and adoration for the world of FF7 to deliver an unforgettable experience for new adventurers and longtime fans, reaching new heights of cinematic storytelling, immersive and fast-paced combat, and rich, exp rich exploration across a vast world. We can't wait to share more details later this year. Also, Rebirth is the second entry in the remake project, which retails the story of the iconic fantasy game, Redefined RPG, yada yada. Uh, the Sorpion City Midgar seems to embark on a journey in pursuit of Sephiroth, the vengeful swordman from Cloud's past, who was thought to be dead in the standalone adventure players will explore an expansive world all bright to life with the new graphical fidelity developed specifically to leverage the power of the playstation 5 as players unravel a gripping er narrative rich with mysteries to uncover they will also witness the personal journey of each party member and strengthen their bonds to work together and face off powerful enemies yeah that sounds about right that sounds about as you know basic and bare bones as you can kind of get there is some uh screenshots oh my god they're in 1080p bruh Bruh, I get it, it's early, but come on, bruh. 1080p screenshots, oh my god. Still looks good. <laughs> Still looks very nice. There's a whole bunch of clear signs here. The world and environment that they're setting up for, the o overall open world, isn't really open world-like. And that wouldn't surprise me, because it does not need to be open world like and we've been saying this several times open world doesn't make a lot of sense large zones wide linear quote unquote is probably the way to go and there's another game that's perfectly like that that simmons is uh fantastically obsessed with and has been obsessed with a long time a little couple of games called the xenoblade series and they're pretty similar to that i don't expect them to go as big and expansive as xenoblade where you're gonna like dive into this ocean and swim across like all of it but even simmons agreed to a certain point uh there's gonna be he sees a lot of similarity because he's like an expert in in how those games are designed and why they are the way they are there's a lot of similarity here which is good um and they're touting exploration they're touting this as being uh, a, a big element like that so you know it's a good it's a good sign uh that is a cat dad cat dog man bear big pig bird thing uh that is a uh a normal girl nothing bad will happen to her uh that is a horrible freakish mother the likes of which you should never see uh somebody i was i was looking at some info and people were trying to get some sweet deets off of the character health bars because in some battle sequences, yeah, check this out. They start at relative uh, lower health. Come across some screenshots, uh, at least at the beginning. Uh, the characters actually have like health in the hundreds, you know, it's low. So it's obviously we're resetting. It's a different game. It's not the same carryover of abilities and stuff. I'd be very surprised. Yeah. Well, they might give you like an Easter egg or something for having your stuff carry over, but it's a new game. So the characters are like in their low thousands. And then uh, people were trying to track down in some fights, characters had like 5,000 HP and it was like, oh shit. So how far into the game? That's like halfway through the game. But in, in like the next shot, which is this, uh, obviously of the Genova fight, seemingly the one that you fight on the, the ship when you cross uh, Junion Harbor to Costa del Sol. This is likely here though, right? Um, people are like, yo, is that halfway through the game? And believe it or not, no. Like, and th this sequence happens even after that, and they have lower health pool. So it's just a debug thing. This isn't a barometer of how far into the game are you? How far into the game is this representing based on your HP values of how close to, you know, 9999 are we getting? It's actually not. And we're close to Junion Harbor here, right? Getting uh, up on the, the rocky hill shores. That's all the construction stuff. So sick. Uh, commands menu. It looks like summons is down here. That's interesting. Summons is down here in the commands menu. I wonder how different that is before, but Aerith has her ward shift and stuff like that she had before. Is ward shift new? Because it's like Tifa was bouncing off of this attack. Maybe that's actually her combination attack with, with Tifa? I don't know. My god, bro. 
the scale though i think that's what i'm getting out of some of these images is the scale of midgar was wonderful right it was just absolutely beautiful how massive the world felt in comparison to your characters uh and that's what was a great element of ogff7 was the scale of the game felt so big compared to how small you were in it i can only imagine i don't know how this is going to do it. i don't know if it's going to be zone based where you literally go into loading zones or stuff like that are you going to like w walk up here with no uh with no loading in between all of this i it's hard to say but this could be all a facade you got to understand everything in video games is essentially a facade once you walk through this area it could just load a completely different thing that makes you go up here right it's all video games are is a is an insane an insanely expressive dynamic loading hallway that's all video games are and they just populate it with stuff like it's a ride at disneyland i i wouldn't be surprised if we get to explore this stuff my question is are we going to be able to visit locations like this right on our way to junyan harbor is there going to be harsh loading sequences? Or are they gonna God of War style it where there is a, an essential loading period in between certain areas that essentially buffers in the data for the next area and it's seamless? FF7 tried to do this, but had loading issues with the Unreal Engine. There was a lot of, you know, sliding through walls and stuff like that. My question is, can we literally run from this location once it's all unlocked and done through the Mithril Caves, past all this shit, right? Past the snake in the marsh, which we haven't even seen yet, all the way past Fort Condor or whatever the hell they do there to the the harbor where Junion is and it will, you know, be this environment. I'm very curious, right? That's possible. That's not like that is, oh, that's just way too much. That's way too much dank shit. You can't do that stuff. No, that's like the point of the PlayStation 5. That is the... The whole point, this system isn't coming out on anything else but a PS5. I would like to think that that is a full demonstration of the PlayStation 5's power, that you can do stuff like that, that the game will allow you to, to do stuff like that. Still, the funky door is going to be somewhere in there. I tell you what, the creepy untextured door is going to show up at some point. I hope it does. I hope it's an Easter egg. I want somebody to talk about the door in the story like it has a story. The door needs a story. To be honest with you, I don't think it's going to have a jump button. That'd be interesting if it did. Final Fantasy 16 does have a jump button. Although I have news for you, it does almost nothing. It's weird. From the little bit that we played, FF16 does have a proper jump button in its, in its gameplay, but he goes not very high at all. He like kind of like lifts his feet a couple a couple feet off the ground and it really is jumping for the sake of jumping's sake whenever you come to a ledge that you can jump up he auto jumps up it in combat it's different in combat he can like you know you can actually like move around and stuff like that he actually has a real jump in combat that is definitely sephiroth that is definitely elena if people thought she was not going to be added, they're going to cut her. <laughs> I remember hearing all this. Man, they're going to cut Elena. This sucks. Uh, yeah, they're going to cut Elena. All right. Yeah, sure. Bugenhagen with his crazy telescope area, right? The, the nutty uh, virtual telescope looking very accurate. I like that he has like constellation stuff all over him. He's all about the stars, which is... Uh, which is all Bugenhagen's story really is. The foliage in like a lot of the older version of the game, like the flowers and stuff like that, we ended up zooming in on them in, in like an Aerith's like flower garden. They were shockingly uh, not a very, very sm small amount of movement. So it was like, oh, like damn, these low res flowers and stuff like that, it does not look great. They changed that. In the later versions, when Integrade came out, there was a huge like graphical boost to a lot of the game. Uh, not to mention the PC version and all that shit. But when it sh when it showed up on PS5 and they they got the the big boost, all of that shit got I think an upgrade. The thing is, the game is like seven to eight months still from coming out. It's still not an easy you know sell of information right now. There's a priority to get certain things online in this trailer and to get things functioning in a certain way. This also isn't running at 60. You know. All that kind of stuff. These, this trailer was in 1080p. There's a lot of things that are coming online in a different way that are probably least less important than something that is representative of an old, older build of the game that they've been working on for a long time because eight months until like going gold is a long time. I'm not too worried about that. I, I, I think even if the foliage does not move around, I think just the exploration of the areas, I like it to be interactive in some way, but man. If it means that we get higher frame rate instead of that, I'm cool with it. So let's go and fire up the trailer again and really pick it apart because I'm not constrained by, by time this time. A lot of people think that there's still one timeline. 
They, uh, I don't know how. There seems to be almost every single hint otherwise, but, you know. Two timelines is two timelines, in my opinion, because we literally see at the beginning of this trailer, everybody's dead. Here at the scene of this terrible disaster, caused by a massive tornado which swept through sectors 0, 1, and 2. Everybody's dead. Amidst and there's the of Tifa's the dead. Damn, Tifa's dead. Damn, Barrett is dead. Uh, I don't think they're making it, bro, boys. The poor dog is dead. Jesus. Uh, everyone is in really bad states, right? If they're not dead, they're not going on some grand adventure anytime soon. So already in progress. Also, wait. Aerith seemingly not doing great either. Uh, when Zack showed up and he was like, you know, Aerith at the end of the Integrade, when he goes to the church to wonder if everything's okay, um, yeah, uh, that's what happened to her. She was a part of some crazy thing that happened. Some tornado thing. And funny enough, wait, wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Jesus, is it really one frame? It might be one frame, bro. This is how much they're teasing. That dude. There it is. Uh, so there's the tornado. For three frames? Two frames. For two frames at the beginning of this, it's showing us the events of the other timeline. Uh, the events that happen in quote-unquote the singularity at the end of Final Fantasy VII Remake, where there's a couple of crazy tornadoes, one kind of representing one timeline and one rep representing the other, where everything's getting fucked up. Where everything that's happening when all the crazy ghost whispers, uh, before they die, before they're destroyed, uh, the planet's trying to fix stuff. Right after this, what do they show? Oh, well, what happened in that timeline now is that Zack lives in some crazy, a crazy existence where he doesn't get killed by all the Shinra soldiers and actually takes them out. However, the world he lives in is not the same as OG FF7. We're still here at the scene of this terrible disaster. The world he lives in, the majority of the party has been either killed or greatly debilitated. They ain't going. They ain't going on a hunt for Sephiroth anytime soon. Search and rescue operations. Zach's waifu is also not doing great. But we have no idea where the hell Cloud is. Ah ha ha! Good question, you say. Where the hell's Cloud? Is he the is he the famous barista that we've all been hearing about? Said this time and time again that in Zack's timeline, Cloud do doesn't end up being the soldier that he might end up being normally. Cloud could just end up being a barista in in Midgar. He can just end up being some Joe Schmo. Who knows where the hell Cloud ends up being? Like who who? I have no idea. All all, all we kind of got the hint at is that. In Zack's timeline, he's probably going to go on a similar adventure that the party is, which is to go after Sephiroth. That is likely going to be his goal. He's going to take the place of Cloud in that story. We were like, oh man, so is he going to join the party and now they're going to go on a crazy adventure to the Northern Crater? It's like, well, probably not. It's probably going to be different. Like, Zack's going to have a different uh, set of people that he's going to be running around with, maybe. This is the... wait for it. This is the Unknown Journey. This is exactly, look how this trailer is composed. This is the unknown journey. This is the, this is the timeline that we do not know how the events are going to conclude. We don't know where this stuff is gonna go. We have a pretty good idea where the, the first timeline is. First timeline is following FF7. First timeline is all FF7. We're, and then where do we see uh, the other timeline? Right here. There they are. Yeah. Just look there at we are. All. It's so green. Even after everything we've done to it, yep, it's there still we go. going strong. It going to those places, way. doing those things. But in reality, it's barely hanging FF7 off. FF7 stuff. Wonderful. Wonderful FF7 stuff. They're just doing their thing, going their merry way, following the exact events of OG FF7. You know, cool. Very cool. And god damn does it look good! God damn! Uh, somebody was like, are those big windmills in the original game? Uh, no, they're not. <laughs> like, the closest thing is, like, Fort Condor. Uh, but they already, like, centralized Fort Condor into this interesting minigame in Integrate. So I don't know what they're going to do with Fort Condor. That's kind of new stuff, right? There's, there's obviously uh, topical points of interest all over the place here. And granted, like, the characters opening a door, going through some sort of crazy cave... To reveal to you the open world is not 
the original game. This is this is a completely different thing that is like leading you out of the funky Midgar zone, which is the plague ridden kind of like sucked life dry uh, escape of Midgar, you know, that kind of stuff. So I'm just thinking this is something a little bit beyond uh, a, a little bit beyond calm where you get the backstory, right? A little bit after it. And that, that's and that's a nice touch, right? This is the whole point: is that you're probably going to go through calm. You're going to get a big old backstory about F Cloud and, and Sephiroth and all this shit, and possibly this is your first introduction to the open world. It could be the Mithril Caves. It definitely could be the Mithril Caves. But if it is the Mithril Caves, that's after the big effing snake. That's already after like several things that have happened. And it feels like this would just be a better moment to, hey, here's your game, boys. Like, here, open the door. Wow. Just look at it all. It's so green. Even after everything we've done to it, it's still going strong. It may look that way, but in reality... I think there'll be a hallway in calm. Yeah. Wow. Oh, it is calm. There you go. Nailed it. Yeah, Calm has, like, a weird castle borders. Nailed it. Good call, chat. I didn't even see that. That's on, like, the big screenshot, too. That's Calm, all right. You're assuming the game is in the same order as the original story-wise? I think it will be. I think the majority of things you're going to run into in this timeline are going to be the exact same shit, and we just proved it. That's the outside of Calm. There you go. I mean, there you go. Just look at it all. It's so green. Even after everything we've done to it. Let's bear the... Oh, it's so pretty. Good What's lord. Been doing these There's deer the last five years. Where's he been? I wouldn't be surprised if some of this stuff is leading up to the Mithril Caves, man. I wouldn't be surprised because it's getting danker, right? And as you get to the Mithril Caves, it's like a snake that has overtaken a big nasty Martian shit. Um yeah, Katase and the developers even said that large events are going to pretty much remain intact. In, in, in Remake Part 2. Uh, so don't worry about things being cut. They're just, uh, from what I understand, they're mostly adding stuff to it. And you're asking me this? This is gonna sound crazy. Chocobo Farm? As far as I know. Can't think of this stuff as being sequential, right? Granted, you get the Chocobos to go through the, uh, to go through and get past the snake. But I wouldn't be surprised if the snake is you know, forced upon you. Cloud was never in Nibelheim five years ago. So again, uh, they're doing the exact same shit as they did in the previous trailer, the one we saw a year ago. Uh, they are focusing on the unreliable narrator part of Final Fantasy VII. And this is slightly spoilery. I hate to say that this stuff is slightly spoilery, where Cloud absolutely is an unreli unreliable narrator of Final Fantasy VII. It's what makes the story interesting, is that you're hearing it from a specific point of view. However, putting into this tra trailer the element that the events that happened back in the day from other characters is also unreliable. So we don't know who's telling the right story. We don't know if Cloud is telling the right story, and we don't know if... Uh, Tifa is telling the right story. What's Cloud been doing these past five years? Where's he been? And you're asking me this? Does everyone have brain damage? Uh, no. Somebody's telling the right story. But people are also lying for a for a couple of really good reasons. Which is, which is where a lot of the events happen way down the line of why characters are lying. This is gonna sound crazy, but... As far as I know, Cloud was never in Nibelheim five years ago. The life stream. It is the very essence of our star. So, interesting to point, we're at Cosmo Canyon here. Meaning that's pretty far in. If we're talking about FF7 as, as a whole right now, and we're at this point of the game, how many, how many places do you technically visit if we got Cosmo Canyon? Calm, Chocobo Farm, Mithril Caves and the Snake, potentially uh, Fort Condor, Junion Harbor, Costa del Sol, the Mountain Pass behind uh, Medeal, not Medeal, what the hell's, what the hell, Mount, Mount Corel, yeah, Mount Corel, Corel, right, the actual mining town, and then Corel leads to the Golden Saucer, and then that also leads to, after that, uh, the prison, which also leads to Gongaga, yeah, just pretty much Red 13's home.
So 12 places. That's 12 locations approximately. Nibelheim is right after this, right? Nibelheim actually comes after Cosmo Canyon, right after it. So there's a lot and probably even more little points of interest along the way. By this point in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, you have already seen two thirds of everything that is the original Final Fantasy VII. Which is funny that they're showing this. Which is funny that this is already being shown and confirmed that you will travel the fuck out of this place if things are going in the approximate order that we think they are. Planetary veins. According to Hojo. I, people say this is the Crystal Caves. Um, yeah, I could see that. Connected to it could definitely be the Crystal Caves. Uh, Crystal Caves. <laughs> I think this is a Cave of the Gi. I'm gonna say this is underneath <laughs> the caves. <laughs> I think it's the Cave of the Gi, which is, uh, you know, you get Seto's story and stuff like that. You get Nanaki's story. Cave of the Gauge? <laughs> uh, yeah, I could, I could definitely see it. It could be a Nibelheim reactor. It could. There's a lot of things in that area that could look sort of similar to this. Uh, Lucrezia, definitely. I, that's, that's much later. That kind of stuff is way later. Um, people are already wondering, will, will, will Sid and Vincent be in this? I, we don't see Sid and Vincent. Like, where are they? There's a whole, like, seven months, bro, of marketing that they have leading up to the finality of this. There's, like, seven months. So they have to, they have to sparse out these elements, you know? They're just gonna save those things for big reveals at Tokyo Game Show or other PlayStation experiences that are gonna happen. PlayStation showcases, whatever. So I, I wouldn't be surprised about that at all. I think, I think they'll both be in the game as well as Kate Sith. We're just gonna have to wait for those character reveals to eventually happen. Sephiroth. Shadows of the man, I believe he called them. Are we also, also, are we 100% convinced that this is Reno? Uh, not Reno, that this is Rufus? Are we 100% convinced that this voice is Rufus? Yeah? I just haven't heard Rufus talk in a long time. It is? Okay. According to Hojo, they're connected to Sephiroth. Because also, you know, Vincent would also know Hojo. Shadows of the Man, I believe he called them. Hmm. To the stage of history. Hmm. Interesting. It could be sung. Yeah, everyone's saying it's Rufus. In Japanese, it is Rufus. Okay, there you go. And then if, if if it's if it's more con confirmed in the Japanese version that it's Rufus, then it's Rufus, and you know we don't have to we don't have to worry about this anymore. Town's too smug to be Vincent, yeah. So once you get chocobos, um, you kind of just get them. Hmm, pretty cool. Uh, all right, here we go. Sephiroth was in Midgar. So this to me is calm, right? This, to me, comes across as the calm flashback. Um, it's, uh, there's only one other place this could possibly be, and there's, there's a couple of rooms that you stay at. There's the, uh, there's the town right before you go into Junion Harbor, where I forgot about that place, too. Uh, right outside Junion Harbor, there's a small town where you meet this girl and her dolphin to get into the city. Um, and you kind of stay the night at some place, the, the little cute town. There's also Gongaga, where you get some weird flashbacks in, you know? But this, this, the aesthetic of it, everything just screams, this is the flashback sequence in Calm. He fought it. Whatever happened, he's alive. But why come back now? After five years, doing who knows what? Well, now. I think we woke it up. Angered it more like. So I'm thinking, obviously, like Red 13 and Barrett are off doing their own adventure here. Granted, vengeance mode. <laughs> Revengeance mode. Um, this is a boss fight that they added to the Mithril Caves. Mithril Caves you just kind of run through in the OG game, and you talk to the Turks really briefly, and that's about it. So it's it's extremely small and not much. It's like it's like one or two screens. So they're just they're just expanding these areas. They're gonna turn the Mithril Caves into like a story sequence area, and another 
another spot to introduce other characters like Elena and stuff like that. Feast your eyes on the Turk's latest and greatest, Elena. She may be new, but she's still a Turk. Yeah, and then Cloud Tifa and Aerith are over here. Ouch. Um, I'm assuming you like split up somewhere in the Mithril Caves just because it's probably a maze, you know? So sick. Jesus! Jesus. Uh, you can literally see Midgar in the background, right? We are not that far away. You can see how all of the mountains in the distance in this direction are uh, nothing but barren, like, like plantless environments, because that's the way it is in the old game. Uh, there's no life around Midgar. Uh, the the life planet uh, the life of the planet's been sucked dry so yeah that's Midgar in the distance and there's they're they're finally getting to a point where there's some you know actual foliage and shit god damn so sick this is so sick I don't love the bit rate though Jesus oh there's an insane tidbit here so we're seemingly controlling Red 13. As Red 13 is flipping, dipping, and zipping. However, uh, we essentially get confirmation of our quote unquote theorized PHS system right here. You might not have noticed if this stuff is if this stuff is really small. Because in the party is Red 13, Cloud, and Barrett. Obviously, Aerith is back here. And if you look way back here, there's Tifa. They're essentially cheering you on from the background, but not engaging. This is a confirmation that Final Fantasy VII Remake is going to be active teams in a similar way that Final Fantasy X is, where you are always given your full party. We presume this a long time ago, right? We presume that, yeah, of course, in the open world, you need to get a PHS and have access to your other team members to just hot swap them out, right? I hate, I hated the fact that there's a big aerial enemy and oh God, how do we get rid of that aerial enemy? Well, I need a magic user or I need Barret. So this sucks. I just, I have to go switch out my party. I can't do anything about that. We don't see them actively switch in, but this is here for a reason. And if you look, if you look at them, they're not fighting. They're like waiting to be brought in. They're like specifically like cheering you on and waiting to be brought in in the background. So who knows, right? It's, it's definitely my prediction. And how would you expand the combat of FF7? I think you would allow them to hot swap in just like Final Fantasy X. So, um, now it's like, okay, so this is a different scenario. In the very next frame, seemingly in the same fight, you always have Cloud in your party, right? Like you always, you always have Cloud in your party in the OG FF7. You can just swap in other team members, right? I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case because they show the example of seemingly the same area, seemingly a similar battle. And then it cuts to later. And now it's Cloud, Aerith, and Tifa. So at some point they swapped in. And now they're doing crazy dual text and shit. Can we even, um, amongst this absolute pixelated mess, can we get a glimpse of like Yuffie or Barrett or Red 13 in the background here? Can we even get that? I don't, I don't know if we're gonna be able to do it. Amongst this insane pixelated garbage, we found it. So. Way, way back there, when, when the party member isn't actively being utilized, they are, they are out of commission. Like there's some where's Waldo is, is, my, is my other party member because you don't need to worry about them. When you, I'm assuming you're gonna press a button of some kind or use some ATB and then bam, you're gonna be able to pull in the other member on, on, the, on the fly. It'll probably cost something. There's Tifa. Jeez, the dual techs look insane. Cool. Keep it away from me. So this is, uh, I believe, 
at the bottom of the boat, right? Pretty sure this is at the bottom of the boat. Yuffie's with you. She's all she's all upset because she's barfing on the boat, right? And she hates Sephiroth. They say she, you know, she's a monster that she can peer inside you, into the very depths of your soul, that she can become those you hate. Do we fight Genova again until City of the Ancients? This is the boat. Yeah, this is all, all I'm trying to figure out is this is for sure the boat, right? This is the first Genova encounter outside of uh, the, the one that you get at the very beginning of the game. You, into the very depths of your soul, that she can become those you hate, those you fear, those you love. So, this guy changed. This is Cloud, right? Uh, in, in part one, you get a vision of specifically this dude. And it's Marco. It's no shit. Your, your friend Marco that is next door to you in uh, part one. So this is another compliment of the alternative timeline. Because Cloud is being given a vision of timeline number two, which is Zack's timeline. And now we have an idea of where the hell is Cloud in Zack's timeline? He's not doing so hot. Now it isn't, it isn't Cloud just, I'm sorry, it isn't Zack just on some old merry joyous romp up to the top of the, uh, the, top, the, top of the world. No, he is literally tracking cloud who's maybe gone missing and has fallen prey just like marco did to sephiroth influence so now cloud is this guy our sick he became that dude in this timeline and uh zach's trying to save him Ooh, and that's suddenly an interesting cadence to zach's story that suddenly both of these teams are going up to the northern crater for different reasons they are uh you know now now zach has a good reason to go you murdered my dad! You burned my village! Do you know that I killed her? So, who is she? And a lot of people are, are confused by this, right? A lot of people are somewhat confused by what does he mean? What is this? This is almost unchanged from the OG game. It's obviously more embellished, but in the OG game, Sephiroth is fucking with Cloud all the way until the Northern Crater because Sephiroth wants Cloud to give him one thing, the Black Materia. In the OG game, Cloud nearly kills Aerith when the Black Materia shows up because he's under Sephiroth's influence. All this really is is just Sephiroth fucking with Cloud. And it's the same shit. This isn't some alternate timeline thing. Like, did, what, did Tifa die in the other timeline? Like, there is a lot in the original game that is kind of unexplained of what happened at Nibelheim in between that time. No, Tifa does actually get fucked up, but she doesn't die. And I don't want to go into too much because this is like getting really deep into the story of what the hell happened. Because ultimately, Nibelheim is where all the interesting shit happens in OG FF7. All the crazy, interesting bullshit goes down as far as like, so what happened that night? Like what actually took place that evening? And it's the accounts of some characters versus other characters and to find out like the truth. And the truth is still a very critical part of the game. They're setting up this ire of like, oh, who's lying? Uh, Sephiroth is now telling Cloud that Tifa's lying. Tifa thinks that Cloud is lying. Nobody believes anybody's actual story. The funny thing is that Crisis Core, which just came out, already gives us a definition of what happened. The truth was in Crisis Core, right? We already know exactly what goes down. So it's funny to me that they would release that game and give you all that information. I think there's another thing that is going to happen with Cloud's story, with Tifa's story of what happened, with Sephiroth's story that we do not and no yet with FF7. That's going to be some unknown shit of how they're going to tie all this shit together. Now it's the big question of how do they tie these two timelines together because at the end of this shit, we have no direct confirmation of Zack's timeline outside of the little snippets, you know? 
The only, we saw a whole bunch of Zach like running around and being fine before. And no shit, now this is the only snippet we get of Zach's timeline. This is it. In his timeline, everyone's fucked up. And the one little bit right here, right here. This is seemingly a snippet of Zach's timeline where Cloud is, you know, Ramon or Pablo or Marco going up to the Northern Crater. Cloud takes that guy's place. Fascinating. The coolest part is that we have an idea where this is going and we can come to a pretty good conclusion that there is two timelines. There's a Zach Alive timeline and the regular timeline, which is just most, most likely regular shit is going to be happening. But uh, how it's going to go down, I don't know. Are we eventually just going to start playing a Zack at some point? I don't know, dude. I have no idea. What I do know... What I do know... The game is fucking massive, bro. The game is fucking massive. I don't know if they're going to do split campaigns. Like, one side of the story is Zack on one disc. One side of the story is Cloud on another disc. I don't think they're going to do that. I think Zach is integral to the whole story and you're just going to, he's just going to be a part of it. Uh, a lot of people are thinking, yeah, disc two is going to be Zach's timeline. I'm going to, I'm going to say no. I don't think they would segment uh, pivotal story things like that. Because if you think from a game development standpoint, you're pretty much asking people that are brand new to FF7, do you want the cloud disc or the Zack disc? And everyone's like, well, I played the previous one, so I want the, the cloud disc. I don't know who the fuck Zack is. So fuck the Zack disc. I'm just going to throw that disc away. <laughs> you know? So I definitely don't think that's how they're going to do it. I think disc two is just going to be more game data. It's just going to be... Yeah.